Now, you might want to pull it a little bit closer to the time. So, Good evening. It is now 6.30. And I'd like to call the June 14th special board meeting for the budget review of the Niles Main District Library Board to order. Um, Margaret, would you please take the roll? Trustee Gerblick? Here. Trustee Manishak? Here. Trustee Schoenfeld? Here. Trustee Makula? Here. <coughs> Trustee Wazanski? Here. Trustee Olson? Here. And Trustee Kean Adams. Okay, thank you. Um, item three on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? at all 
about this community. And I'm here again because, again, this library board has put out an agenda that shows that some of our library trustees are using this board for the benefit of themselves and their friends and not acting in the best interest of the community this library serves. Last month, four members of this board forced us into a vague and open-ended contract with the new trustees' campaign worker, a wedding videographer who they've produced no evidence of having any experience in consulting for libraries or other similar public entities or organizations. If you're reading your library trustee emails, then I know you have heard from many of us in the community who are asking you to not go forward with that ridiculous contract and not go forward with the senseless cuts that you proposed in your quest to make the library look less like the award-winning library it is and more like Trustee McCullough's vision where there are no kids walking to the library after school unattended, and no teenagers here past some arbitrary time, and where no one will be able to borrow technology items that our tax dollars have already paid for because they should just go buy it themselves. In the budget workshops, you learned from every department in this library how this library works. And if you still want to pay an outside consultant to duplicate their work, then find someone qualified to do it. Last month, when it was explained to the trustees that our public library doesn't let anyone have access to library servers and databases without passing a background check, Trustee Hanushek at least added the stipulation that Stephen Yourself has a background check before the board passed that vote on that contract. And it was after we all heard Trustee Driblick say, in this very room, that if it reaches $1,000, then we'll reevaluate it. And yet here we are with an agenda for Wednesday that shows a new business item authorizing a payment of $1,500. So in less than a month, it's gone from $1,000 to $1,500. Where does it stop? Just short of $25,000 where you technically have to put the work out to public bid? Just because this board's governing document doesn't clearly outline that you shouldn't be giving your campaign workers backroom deals with open-ended contracts doesn't mean that you should do it just because you can get away with it. Listen to the people of the community. Some of you were elected by less than 1,500 voters, but regardless of how you got here, your job is to represent all of us and protect this valuable resource that is the Niles Main District Library. Thank you. school in the area and had a wide variety of friends some who got in trouble with the law some who did not some who committed various acts of vandalism some who did not very few of the people that I knew that went to the library did such things they wouldn't be on any of your lawns with their vehicle spinning their tires they wouldn't be egging your house they wouldn't be playing ding dong ditch lighting a dog, a bag of dog excrement on fire on your uh, porch before we the doorbell, just to see you stomp it out. Having a place for children to go, or teens to go, that is safe is important. Also, even allowing them to uh, check out technology, DVDs, wouldn't you rather have them at home at some friend's house watching some DVDs after nine o'clock? on a Friday or Saturday night, rather than out for who knows how many hours trying to find something to do to entertain themselves. The same thing, if they got if they get a little camera out to do a TikTok video or whatever, they're doing something that is less likely to get them in trouble than if they do not have a library, the library closes at seven, so they're not able to get out there. I'll tell you something else, when I was a little child, my grandmother forced me to get up one library book and read it each time they brought me to the library. 
I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Until one day, I read a book that was actually interesting. The next time I was at the library, I was in the children's section, and I was just staring at the books. I'm staring at the covers. And I'm just sitting there staring. One of the children's librarians came on over. And she said, can I help you? And I asked her, I've been reading these books, and I found a good one. How do I find more good ones? And she took the time to find out what book it was I read, what the subject was, what the author was. And from that, she was able to suggest other books that I might enjoy reading. Just from that very simple interaction, I don't even know how old I was. I might have been in California at the time because my parents had sent me over there when we got another child because I was the youngest. You know, so it was to get me out of mom's hair. But it was from that that turned into a lifelong love of reading. I did very well in high school, frankly, without trying. I mean, I did well in college. But a lot of that is just from reading. And if you have, you know, some people say, oh, yeah, the parents can buy books. But your parents will never have the, the breadth of books available, nor will they have the knowledge that the children's librarians do. Talk to one of the children's librarians. It's amazing how much time they spend reading children's books and getting to know what, uh, you know, somebody who likes Charlie and the Chocolate Factory might also like James and the Giant Peach, or somebody who likes, I don't know, I can't remember, you know, some of the other ones. But uh, libraries are very important. You can cut back on libraries, you can cut back the hours, you can cut back the amount of books, the amount of DVDs, the amount of technology that you allow the kids to have. They're going to find something else to do with their time. You're going to spend more tax dollars on police. You're going to have more, uh, probably more property damage claims. Everybody in this room and everybody in the town. That's what we can expect. Oh, and the other, the last thing is, I just find it, I'm just astounded. I'm, I'm curious. I'm, actually, I would like to know, do any of you take your car to the nail salon to have the person at the nail salon diagnose the problem with the car? I'm kind of guessing that you do, based on hiring a guy who's a videographer. I mean, unless you're going to actually have him make videos, you know, that seems to be where his expertise is. I've never hired anyone who doesn't have an expertise in something, unless it's for a job that is, you know, very mean. I mean, I've hired experts in various technologies. And you, you don't hire somebody who's a videographer when you need somebody who uh, knows electrical circuits or computer programs or how to have a functioning library. Thank you. Good evening. It's amazing what 500 bucks will get you around here. What's the issue? The issue is a $7 million budget, and the issue is 100 employees in this library. That's what the issue is. The first speaker, amongst all the cuts that she's saying you're going to make, all these different things that I haven't heard before, she puts in there, and this excellent staff, which does a wonderful job. This is about saving my government job, funded by the taxpayers, PS, and the benefits too. That's all this is about when it comes to stoking up, because the library is not going anywhere. The first day you sat down, you said the library isn't going anywhere. Efficiency does not mean the library goes away, but you stoke up all this emotion, you stoke up all this fear because you don't have the facts on your side. Trial lawyers, when you have a bad fact pattern, what you do is you harness the, the juries to the point that they are totally emotional. You get them to shut down their logic shut down their knowledge of past history and focus on you and your line of argument so you can emotionally steer them into where you want them to go. Classic. Can't keep up. What has my library board done for me over the last three weeks? 
You completed the election of new officers. You approved operating expenses for $243,938. You approved payroll expenses, $274,801.12. You did not approve special reserve expenses of $83,528.58. Would this amount of money subject to further review? You approved the renewal of the previously negotiated health care plan with Blue Cross Blue Shield for the fiscal year July 1, 2021 to June, 20, to June 30, 2022, with the employees increasing their contribution portion for their own premium of 5%. You voted down the motion to instruct the executive director to sign a contract for the previous board's, quote, roofing project subject to review by the attorney. You set dates and times for three new, not previously established budget workshops. There we go. And then completed those workshops on June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, looking to the informed completion of draft one of the 2021-2022 budget, with the head of each department coming forward and presenting their department budgets, their numbers, their figures, their logic. What else did you do? You're reminding us that back in year 2015, the previous board did an outrageous thing. As a trustee, you never, ever take your authority that you were voted in, your statutory requirement, to review and approve any new hires. That's your job. And I was here when it happened, and I objected to it then. But the board gave it away. You gave it to the director. How insane is that, let alone a violation of your fiduciary duties? The board took it back, and we went back to now how it was in 2015, and boy, did you get kicked around for it. You brought in an outside communications and procedural consultant to evaluate, assess, and inventory equipment, library systems, and library operation, and then report back to the board with the findings. You suggested a cap of $1,000. It came over from over here, which was a great suggestion. But then as I sat here, and you wanted to pass that, they said, no, 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 not necessary. No, 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 no. And I was sitting in that chair going, oh my gosh, here we go. They're going to jump all over you because there's no cap. Great strategy, good move. Then what happened next? You came up with a cap. $1,500. That's 500 bucks. Okay. You also placed a freeze on temporary hiring and the hiring of substitutes. You suspended all capital projects and special reserve purchases with the exception of emergencies. So you get a handle on the spending. You place a temporary freeze on purchases through June 30th with the exception of emergencies. You set a special board meeting for the presentation of draft over the budget for June 14th, which is today at 6.30. I'm not confused. I'm following that pretty well what you're up to. My question would be, what wonderful coffee you drink, because I don't know how in three weeks you got all that done, but you did. I think it's very commendable. Also, when it comes to public comment, people send in written public comments. The problem with that is all these public comments can be loaded. That's okay. Written public comments should be placed in the file for review by the board. Oral public comments should be time. limited to 30 minutes time. with somebody stepping up. I do not hear time on like the person in front of me. Went way over. There's also the question of whether or not the police are investigating who vandalized my library. It's time. Who brought criminal, whether or not criminal rules are going to be brought. Whether or not there's videotape of who vandalized his library. Because they should stop. Can you see what this is? You see what this is? This is what it is. Save my time. government. I can shot. loudly. Nobody yeah, is going to take away Jim Campbell. It's time that I step forward. And it's time that I step forward. And it's time that I step forward. I have time. Why? 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 This one is from East Main School District 63. 
to the Niles May District Library Board of Trustees. Recently, we became aware that the library's board president and treasurer proposed eliminating all outreach programming in local schools. This is of some concern. As a district serving more than 3,500 pre-K to 8th grade students, most of whom live in the library service area, and 55% of whom are low income, our schools and families rely on the valuable outreach services the library provides. For many years, the library has been one of our strongest community partners. While each of our schools does have a small library, the Niles Bay Library's excellent youth services department effectively leverages our literacy education with on-site services, bringing deeper and more extensive resources to the table that we have at our disposal. And it matters that these professional librarians come into our schools. Transporting our students to the library during the school day would be costly in terms of time, resources, and taxpayer dollars. Simply busing our entire student population once to and from the library would cost approximately $6,500 and would result in a loss of state-mandated instructional time, which is extremely regimented and precise. The same services have been provided much more efficiently for many years by youth services staff visiting each school. School library partnerships are common, enriching both institutions and positively impacting youth. Eliminating this critical outreach program would negatively impact thousands of students and their families in D63 alone. As elected officials ourselves, we are keenly aware that we have an obligation to serve the best interests of our students, families, and the community. And one of the best ways to invest in this community is to ensure that its youngest residents have the resources they need to learn, grow, and become contributing members of society. We strongly advise the board to maintain its outreach services into schools. <coughs> Sincerely, Alexandra Brook, President, Tom Simmons, Vice President, Katie Anderson, Board Member, Walter Gluskin, Board Member, Janet Kaskowski, Board Member, Sheila Urban, Board Member, and Crystal Zeck, Board Member. This one is from someone named Dominic Henry. As a new resident of Niles, two years this August, I moved from Jefferson Park. I am concerned about changes in the funding for our library. One of the things that attracted me to Niles was the wonderful library. The library is a place where kids can go to learn about the world we live in, and limiting access to that diversity only limits opportunities for our children. There are other communities which have great libraries, such as Schomburg and Des Plaines. We want potential homeowners to pick Niles instead. Our library gives us a chance to compete. We have many great facilities and people in Niles, but we need everything we need to do everything we can to grow. Thank you for your time, Dominic Henry. This is from Roberta Tellefson, a very long time uh, volunteer here at the library. To the Niles Main Library trustees, the library is not about saving money. It is your duty as trustees to understand that it is about knowledge. It is knowing that the public needs to be able to get information and to understand that information. And that is what our library is so good at. I have grown up in Niles since the age of 13 and have used the library throughout my 57 years here. I have taken my children and grandchildren to pick out books to bring home. My grandchildren have played on the computer, read stories, participated in programs, and got DVDs to take home and watch together. I have watched it grow and become a huge part of my life, especially after a year in COVID. I have taken classes to learn and to just have fun. These classes are at no cost, unlike the Park District and Senior Center. I have also gotten to learn about Zoom. That has been a beacon in a year of being alone. I, take, I have taken technology and gardening classes, sewing and crochet. I could go on and on. The library stands out in our town of Niles. It's a beautiful building inside and out. The people working there are lovely. They genuinely care and are very helpful. I have become friends with quite a few of them just through the library. So if you think that cutting the budget is going to make the library better, you are wrong. It's never been about the money, but about the joy that the library brings to everyday lives. Please rethink your agenda. I'm just one person, and through me, my entire family has learned through the library. Just think what it has done for the village of Niles. Thanks, Roberta Tellefson, taxpayer. All right, this is from Elizabeth Rotinger, Niles resident. 
Dear trustees of Niles Main District Library, I am distressed by the proposed cuts in Niles Main District Library services, especially because many recent changes seem rushed through without time for fact-checking and due consideration of the full effects. Please let this budget reflect smaller, slower changes. Our library is an important part of our community. The services it provides have effects far beyond the obvious. As an example, I joined the Nitwits group when someone, in the spirit of sharing promoted by the group, mentioned it to me in a craft store. In joining the group, I became part of a community. The library is an important source of community for people like me who don't get connections from work or religion. Through the group, I learned about and started to use the library's technology. I've used a 3D printer, the slide scanner, and other equipment, and have encouraged and helped others to use them. I've contributed to charitable works and learned about resources within Niles. I've taken classes and workshops and learned how to use more of the library's resources, physical, digital, and interpersonal, to improve my life. These things only happened because I was gathered in and made part of the community by one initial program. That's what community is. That's what the library does because it has such varied resources and programs. Every program and resource is a form of outreach that can pull people in and connect them to other people and other types of resources, which builds the Niles community and justifies the support through taxes. As you consider the budget, please understand how each item has this multiplicative <coughs> effect exactly because the library is the center of so many different things. Please support the library's continued role in drawing people in and connecting them, regardless of whether they initially have a library card or speak English. Thank you for your time, Elizabeth Rodinger. Rodinger. And last one is from Steve Sanders, Stephen Sanders. My family and I are patrons of the Niles Public Library, and it's an important part of the community. Over the last year and a half, I have taken advantage of the technology offered to learn new skills and apply them to other charitable organizations I have worked with. My family makes use of the extensive movie collection. My children have been able to check out games. Having access to an extensive collection, like the one currently held at the Niles Public Library, has saved us money as a family. I don't understand how limiting access to materials and reducing the amount of materials in the library will benefit the village in the long run. As someone who used the library services to build new skills, I would implore you to reconsider cutting the library's budget just because you don't like spending money. Thanks, Stephen Sanders. That is all the public comments. Okay, thank you, Susan. Okay, the next item on our agenda, we are at item five, we do the proposed 2021-22 budget. Um, before we begin, I would like to reiterate pertinent facts that are relevant to this budget process. Um, I would like to begin by clarifying an incorrect statement that has been repeatedly voiced. A meeting for the 21-22 budget between Greg Fridge, Joe McCool, and myself was held on Wednesday, May 26th, and was scheduled in open session on May 24th at a board meeting with the general public and the trustees present. Therefore, this was not a secret meeting. Uh, in addition, I want to be very clear that never were we cutting services to our homebound residents. This false statement was a disgraceful attempt to cause fear and anxiety among our homebound residents. I want to assure our homebound residents that their services will not be cut and they never were going to be cut. In addition, just this evening, I heard that we're cutting programs to seniors. Uh, I believe in our conversations with the adult services and outreach supervisor, if I have this correctly, that was made very clear because he wanted her to explain just what programs involve seniors because we had no intention of cutting them and actually we're trying to enhance them and we're suggesting our staff consider outside sources for funding to enrich our senior programs. So I just wanted to clear that those few things up. I know there's many, many other misstatements that are being made and we just don't have time to go through them all. But moving on, um, at the 524 board meeting, the following steps regarding spending were implemented. A freeze on hiring, a freeze on substitutes. All capital projects are suspended with the exception of emergencies. All special reserve purchases are suspended with the exception of emergencies. Since March of 2020, we have all struggled for the 
COVID pandemic, which closed our library on and off for almost a year. And reopening has been a slow process. We want to thank our taxpayers who provided 100% salaries and benefits to our library employees during the worst pandemic from March 2020 through the present. Taxpayers have also picked up additional costs to provide health insurance for library employees' family members who unfortunately lost their insurance during the pandemic. In an effort to offset this tremendous payment by our taxpayers, who themselves endured furloughs, layoffs, lost health, insur health insurance, and struggled to meet rent and mortgage payments, we are evaluating our spending and aligning our 21-22 budget with this post-pandemic period as we provide services and worthwhile programs to all our residents. With this in mind, following are the 21-22 budget guidelines received from Treasurer Makula. The library will not be funding professional development travel to conferences and events. Instead, our focus is for staff to be all in at the Niles Main Library as we rebuild our library, making it the highlight of our community, creating programs and services attracting more residents of all ages than ever before. Our goal is to engage, educate, enrich, and invoke excitement when you come to this library. The library will be open 54 hours per week. Nursing homes, preschools, and schools will be responsible for pickup, timely return, and missing materials. Purchases of books, DVDs, other content and materials shall not exceed the 2020-21 budget, which if, when you compare the figures, um, it's pretty level across all the departments. So that's not a drastic decrease, but it's keeping it at a pace where it was previously. Library staff will no longer travel to preschools, daycare, and schools. Instead, preschools, daycare, and schools are invited to bring their students to the library during hours that school buses or vans will be idle. Library staff can introduce students to the library and its resources, services, and activities. Familiarity with the library will lead to future visits and library use by these students. The library could pursue alternative modes of transportation to facilitate resident attendance at our programs and events possibly through community partnerships, something we really should explore. Employed memberships and dues will not be a budget expense, but a personal expense. To minimize spending, the library will seek to obtain a complimentary membership to the Chamber of Commerce in reciprocation for the library services provided at all of their events. Our goal is to make the Niles Main District Library better than ever for residents and staff with our 21-22 budget. We will begin this process by reviewing the budget line items on the 21-22 budget draft one document. Thank you. I believe everyone has a copy of the 21-22 draft one that was distributed by, or was dropped off by Greg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we also um, have the figures that were Included by trust by um, Treasurer Makula. Joe, did you pass those out to everyone? Okay, because since we'll be talking about both numbers, this spreadsheet has both numbers side by side to make it easy for you to follow and um, comment. So, yeah. now, is this that's the original proposals by the staff and the administration? I'm sorry, <coughs> your proposals. And our original proposals from the staff and uh, the administration are being ignored completely? No. You were given a second spreadsheet. Yes, I include it. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're fine with it? You no, it? I'm not fine with it. Okay, let me help you understand. The first column is the 21 22 budget. Those are the numbers presented by Greg Chris. The second column are the changes that um, Treasurer Makula has um, implemented. So we're gonna go through these line items and we'll see the differences, or not see differences, and we'll go from there. Well, I'd that like to vote for our, the original budget that was proposed that was sent out instead. 
Why are we voting on something we because didn't talk is, about? What she always does. She always wants to go like that. <coughs> Excuse me, may I have the floor for asking me a Please question? Have the, floor. the reason these numbers were not included in the draft that was dropped off at your house, because when Trustee Makula presented the numbers to Greg Pritz at the last board meeting, he said he didn't need them. That he would enter them after this meeting. So this is why you're working with these two different columns of figures. But irregardless, these were the numbers that were brought up to all the departments during all the workshops, and now we're going to compare them and go down, and your comments and any other data you want to provide are, are more than welcome. Yes, Greg. We're already Trustee McCulla approached me after the meeting and he had some papers. He did not identify what those papers were. Uh, and he said that they were for the uh, tentative ordinance. Um, had I known that they were uh, numbers that I could do something with, had he identified them as such, I might have taken them. But simple fact of the matter is, I can't draft the ordinance until after tonight. So uh, it's it's a slight mischaracterization of, uh, of the interchange that we have. Thank you. Terminology, possibly? Um, it, it, it really doesn't matter to call it an ordinance, which is definitely wrong. But the fact of the matter is, we can't exclude these numbers. They're part of the process. That's why we spent three days in workshops. So um, since there's not a lot of dialogue, between trustees and sometimes the administration, these two things do happen, but we still need to progress and move on. Carolyn, can I get a clarification on whether Suzanne Schoenfeld, as the secretary of the board, is reading Becky Keene Adams' comments, or if you would prefer that I do that? Well, what I don't want is the reading of essays. If there are any, um, if you can summarize, if there's a point, by all means. But this, but this is, is a budget. You're not going to do that as the secretary? I'm sorry? Uh, she had sent them to you to read? And I thought, excuse me, but I thought Trustee Olson was going no, to read them. No, she sent it to Well, I never said that today, did it? No, no, it was brought up at the last meeting. No, it doesn't no. matter to me. Uh, yeah, the fact I think of the matter is, be verbatim. The fact of the matter is we're not reading essays. Oh, excuse me. For the because this is a budget excited. meeting. If you want to wait mm -hmm. till the end and read them, we need to get moving with these figures. That's why we're all here. Now, if you've read it's those read comments by her, excuse me, Trustee Olson, please. Now, Susan, if you've read them already and you can summarize what her points are, then by all means, yes. But we really don't have the time to sit here and go through pages of essays. I'm sorry. Well, I'm I thought she had questions that she was going she, to She does have some questions. It's a variety of things. I will put them in at the time that you were covering these lines. In Sounds the good. That's a, that's and a great also, idea. can we get a copy of your budget, your spreadsheet, Joe? Oh, yeah, sure. I'd like to read this from Becky Not before we get started. Uh, I'm very girl. glad to have my thoughts considered. I'm sorry, Trustee Olson, can we proceed? I appreciate President Driblick's assurance that I may give input. <laughs> Who's Driblick? Driblick. Oh, Driblick, I'm sorry. As a new trustee, I've never been involved in the budget process and wasn't sure how to structure my concerns in a way that would make sense. I did request to record myself doing this for viewing during tonight's meeting, but that was deemed inappropriate. So instead, I asked our secretary to read them for me. Thank you, Suzanne, for doing that. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Um, now, Greg, I don't know if you are going to run with this as we usually do. I guess we start with salaries. I would think since revenues we can't affect. Did you want to maybe introduce the line items and mention the figures and see if there are any comments. I guess it would be better coming from you than me. Uh, I, I haven't prepared anything. I, I you know, usually do a, uh, a presentation, but uh, given the arrangement, I, I haven't been able to. Oh, I understand. But the presentation is usually this document, which yeah. is on the screen. I just want to go down the line items looking at the sheets, which we usually did only looking at a screen. 
So, um, do you I want me to pause after I read each caption mm -hmm. uh, for comments, or is there some other? Well, actually, salaries are. I mean, you'll read the salaries, um, and then there's a total, and then after the total, if there's any questions, but the next grouping may have questions. I, I, I don't know what everyone's thinking. But salaries, I guess you can go straight through them and then ask if there are any questions at the total. Uh, sure. Is that is that did you are you comfortable with doing that? Is that okay? I'll talk all day long. <laughs> I think you know that. <laughs> okay, no. Salaries, payroll, executive director, twenty one twenty two budget suggested one hundred and thirty eight thousand four hundred and forty four. The twenty one twenty two changes. Makula, 138,444. So it doesn't look like there's a change. No change. So it's probably easier if you just say no changes. Everyone will grasp that more quickly. Okay. Payroll department managers, 200,415. Makula changes, 200,418. I think that's an error. Which one? <laughs> Mine, I didn't think it was that funny. Um, it's probably, he probably didn't change it, so it would be the same. That would be a logical that would be explanation. This, that okay. would be this I, I lost, where is this number? Where it says changes is what he's reading. Because it is, that number is here. I said that's obviously an, a typo. Okay, fine. Thank you. I think we're looking for changes. Okay. So you just want me to skip for the changes? Well you should well you should at least read what it is and say no change, no change, just so the okay. audience has an idea. I'm sure it's hard enough for them to be sitting there trying to grasp all this. Payroll, division supervisors, five hundred and forty thousand four hundred and seventy eight dollars. No change. Payroll assistant supervisors, three hundred and six thousand one hundred and thirty four dollars, no change. What? Can you just explain what does a no change mean? I know I want change. the audience to make sure it's clear to them as well. What does it mean, no change? You know, Greg, I think I'll take over. All right, thank, thank you. you. Okay, okay, all right, let's, um, if I can help you on no the change from the original. Yes. If you look at the sheets, you'll notice the numbers are the same. I thought maybe he could go quickly by not having to repeat them. I'll take over from now, though. Thank you. Okay, so I think we've stopped at payroll division supervisors. Is that correct? Uh, assistant supervisors. Thank you. Should I, that needs to be read or it's done? I think it's done. Thank you. Okay, payroll librarian one. One million ninety-nine five hundred forty-six dollars That was changed to 822766 Library grade five, 851,861. That was changed to 756,218. Payroll associate one, 130,479. Was changed to 25,204. Payroll library grade six, 300,561. Was changed to 144,871. Payroll Associate 3, 31,153, was changed to 25,204. Substitutes were at 5,500, that's at zero. Substitutes are, have been frozen, so that counts for that. Total salaries were 3,604,571, with changes, they are at 2 million. 959737. So are there any questions? Yes. Um, since Joe came up with these figures, can I ask Joe directly? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Joe, I would very much be interested in knowing where you came up with these figures because some of them are quite different. I have a detailed list here. Okay. Uh, how did you come up with them? Did, like, for example, you went from 130, 49 for payroll associate one to 25,000. Uh, that is a drastic change. 
Is it because at this time we don't have those people working? Because I know we are short some we, people. We have a lot of vacancies. And so you just and went with... And, and those people are not currently employed, but the budget break call for it had their salaries. In there. Uh, because some maybe of those positions we should consider, were having, since we're supposed to be going back to level five, that we should maybe increase our hours. Actually, increasing We're hours basing it based. on 54 hours a week. First of all, okay, I'm listening. we have nine different departments. We have vacancies in several other departments. And those are the ones that are at lower levels there, where part of that is, is where, where elimination is. I think she's questioning if we opening and why are people yes. at 70 hours. Can you clarify that? Northwest Stern Libraries, Northwestern Suburbs, are not even all at their regular hours now, but they're also adding Sundays. And you're still proposing we, even though we're at level five now, that we are going to go to 54 hours? I think we can do 54 hours. If they want to be open Sunday, it doesn't matter. I, I pass by the library many, many times a week because I live in the neighborhood. And when I come by, I see about seven or eight cars in front of the building. Those are patrons. And I see like 40 cars on the side of the building. Those are employees. There are 50 cars. And if you walk in the library, you see it's like the ratio of um, employees to patrons is like 10 to 1. Well, I don't think that's a valid way to figure this out. By number of cars. I mean, well, I, I just walk in the library and see for yourself. Joe, I've been here the past two weeks, off and on, and the numbers are a lot higher than that because, for one thing, it's summer. And you have kids coming for summer reading, adults coming in and out. So, you know, that's your opinion. But I personally don't think you should base our budget completely on the fact that these people currently aren't employed here and then we won't go back up to 70 hours, which a library of our size should be at. I think you should give it a little more wiggle room there. I'm not saying you have to go back up to what it was originally, but you know, we need a little more money in there than that. Uh, to me, you're cutting it. Kind I, I, of I think the people here can operate very efficiently with the staff that exists now and, and with the, the circulation is, is less than half of what it was pre-COVID. And that's in the latest month where, where the circulation has been higher. But if you go back to January, it's like one tenth of what it was before COVID. Okay, but and, Joe, and we're we, up to level five now. I'm sure more people are gonna be putting foot in the please. library and more things. And people aren't necessarily taking things out like the one letter we received. They're doing a lot of stuff online. But still, if you, the idea that you're going to cut staff uh, and you're going to not even contemplate the possibility, you're talking a budget for a full year. You're, you're, you're not leaving any wiggle room for if we should go up at all even to 60 hours, let alone 54. Uh, well, with all, it, with all honesty, Trustee Rodansky, we're at 54 hours because that's what we've been at, and we are not, you know, the, the library has not gotten back to full capacity. Of course, should the summer be a lot more impactful than I'm hearing, then those numbers, if they needed to be increased, we're definitely going to go in that direction. But remember, our children's department, from what I'm hearing, doesn't even plan on having children in the library. That's a drastic well, that's decrease. Not. Each time I I was here, told, here, excuse me, I'm happy to here. I was told that because of COVID and young children are not vaccinated, staff was uncomfortable with them coming in the building. They just have to wear masks. Everybody who goes into kids' space has to wear a mask. We are, everybody else in the library does not have to if they're vaccinated. But that, but they certainly they have been. They've been. That's not what I was told kids. though. So we need we need to clarify is it more how many numbers? Who would know more than me? Actually, the department people that I was talking to. That's where I got this information from. Okay, that sounds like there was a misunderstanding there. 
I, I did not say that young children were not coming to the library. I said we're not planning programming for the children in the library because they can't get vaccinated. But we do have programming for them that's virtual and in person in the parks. Okay. I never said that. You misconstrued my words. You said they wouldn't I, be in the library, and that's what I'm concerned about. Ma'am, I did not staff, say that. You said they wouldn't. I did be not the, say that. You Can you said, review the tape? I did not say that. You said staff. I did was not say that. Concerned about young children not being vaccinated, and that's why. You have you programs in the my words. park and virtual. You just admitted it. You I mean, misconstrued my words. You wouldn't be in the library, but you have but virtual and programs at the park. They're, they're, they're coming into growing. the building. Pardon me? They're still working. They Who's still working? We still need staff to well, do these programs. Well, I'm not saying we don't need staff. I'm concerned about the children not being in the library filling up the first floor. That's what I'm talking if about. If you're concerned about the so children, why are you cutting hours? From one conversation, from one conversation which is doubtful whether it happened or not, but from one conversation, all of a sudden, you get rid of hundreds of thousands of uh, funding. Well, you know what? It's true. You know, you're basing it on your private conversation. No, it doesn't do a private conversation. It's data and records. Is she misconstrued? It has to do with data and records. You need, you need to, you need to delve in a little further than just, you know, making these generalizations. None of this is just on a whim. We and again, not, when things change, they are not expanding. They are just going back, trying to go back to normal. Just, right, that's our this goal. This is what we're trying that's to That's our do. goal, exactly. Yeah. So we're, we're hoping that it'll happen soon. We're not expanding any. All right, so but moving on, yeah, we can ask, are there any more questions I, about I, salaries? I do yeah. have a question about that particular line. It is a very drastic reduction. 130,000 going down to 25,000. Is that number correct? Is that I'm, way I'm, more? I'm not familiar with even what that line item is. That, yes, is so that is the top know. level of the patron services clerks. They are the ones that are the passport agents, the notaries. They uh, do the higher level work. They have. They are the ones that are the top ranked in the department that have been working here to get better and better. And that's a huge cut. Was that? A, did you mean it to be that large? Are you really not going to go back to doing passports and notaries and all of the things that those people do, including helping people with library cards? So those three services are actually accounting for the difference in that amount? Is that what you're saying? No, I, no, I don't. I, I, he, it sounded, Joe, like you thought that you had just reduced it by the amount of the six vacancies, but you have, the, if we had this as the line, we would be firing a lot of the staff. And which line item is that? This is payroll associate one, I bottom of the front okay. page. Sure. Joe, so, do you want to look into that and um, I'll have, have to go through all these other departments and see where those numbers came from. Thank but you. the fact is, if you're worried about passports, uh, I don't think you can get into most countries now anyway. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay, all right, let's move on, please. Um, are there any more questions about Yeah, I would like items? explanation for all of the cuts. <laughs> Payroll we, librarian one from one million to eight twenty two. Can you explain that? If you look at your department sheets that you were given last well, week. Yeah, okay, direct me. The, well, I don't know where they are. Do you oh. have them? Okay. Remember the binder you received with all the, remember when we sat here and the department gave us all those Oh, questions? I want to know why it's so much lower and because who are you putting? I don't know that it's who, I think it's dollars. Well, <laughs> the one that gets to me the most, if I have to admit, is the associate level one because it's such a drastic Okay, change. is that the one that Susan just talked about? I yes, we're please, at please, please reevaluate that. No job. problem. It's too, too drastic, especially if we start opening passports again and other things, we definitely need those people. Well, understood. Okay, and what we need to do is just, as we go down these line items, that's why we're here. Yes. Okay, so next, if I, if anyone I else? Just, if I may just for a moment, uh, the more things that are left to um, investigation and resolution, et cetera, down the line, uh, the less likely it is that I'll have a tentative ordinance ready for Wednesday because all of that information that we're, uh, we're tabling for the moment to wait for further investigation mm -hmm. is information that has to go into that. Absolutely, I understand. Yeah. But speaking tomorrow, you and Joe can have a thorough conversation and he can give you those numbers 
or explain them and make the changes that are necessary. Is that sufficient is it time for you to have done by Wednesday? Well, the more I'm talking, the less I'm, I'm typing. Well, I don't think he'll talk a lot. He'll, I mean, it's if there are numbers that need to be expressed differently, you'll get them from him. I mean, I think maybe an hour just to clear this up, if, if it even gets to that much. I mean, will that be possible with your schedule? Well, I, I mean, we're half an hour into it, we've only covered like two months. Well, sometimes we do a lot more talking and disagreeing, but, you know, I'm trying to do my best to move past it. We just want to get to the Well, I'd like you to changes. explain your, all of your numbers. Okay, right now the payroll, all the payroll changes are based on the department sheets. We don't have them. I just assumed everyone spent this whole week going over all those department sheets to understand what the possibilities were based on all the recommendations. But, for example, you're reducing the, third, the lowest level, the shelving one. You are cutting the salaries of the lowest paid people in the library. Why would you do that? I think the rest of the trustees, I think all the trustees and the people here deserve an explanation and for the decisions that. behind these, not just Joe going back, looking at it, coming back, giving Greg his marching orders. Well, actually, what you could do is you can just have everyone email. How's that? No, that because the there is a slight yeah. problem with that. I've heard from another trustee who has tried emailing some of the other <laughs> so. trustees that they aren't getting any response back. So therefore, I wonder if I will get a response back if I do email any of you. <laughs> you know, can I just say one thing? Pertaining to that line, if it wasn't cut by a hundred and five thousand if it was cut by less I could maybe right. consider it but being cut that drastically again the numbers will be ready tomorrow you'll all be emailed and we'll quickly take care of it then okay it's not, I, I don't have the details well well if there's going to be any more cuts that are that drastic then I'm going to ask for explanations for those two because I think Cutting things that drastically is unacceptable. Some cut I can accept. I can accept. Yeah, but absolutely. Some of these cuts, especially when you're talking budget for the full year, unacceptable. Oh, thank you. Right. I think there needs to be an explanation for every cut that you, every line. I believe you just handed them to you. He handed us a bunch of well, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm supposed to flip through all of this in 30 seconds and figure it out. Yeah. Okay. And here, you know, this well, year. These are the same numbers that you. This is the same documentation you received. Yes, we have. Along yes. with a thousand other papers. I know, but that's our job. We're supposed to go through And if job. you want to make the cuts, explain where they're coming from. Okay, well, you know, we'll come back to salaries because, I mean, this is getting belabored, and the key is yeah. that Joe and um, Greg need to clarify and Thank you. correct the errors. Thank okay, you. and you'll all be informed. Thank you. We're now at library okay. materials. Okay. Um, Joe, do you want to go down these line items and yes. you have okay. a better no. explanation than I do? Just one at a time, please. Okay, we're back on page uh, two now. Materials. Just giving you a heads up. Okay. Page two. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, of this one. I'm still going to I can use it here a little quieter. You might hear. Joe, you got to see this to your mic so you can carry it way over there. Adult books. Um, 139,500. That's what it was last year. Uh, they requested 170,000. Uh, books juvenile, uh, $68,850. Uh, they requested 81,000. It was $68,850 last year, so it's the same amount as last year. Uh, books teen. Uh, the same amount as last year, $13,950. Uh, downloadables, uh, the same amount as last year, $92,000. Periodicals, $20,000. It was $20,000 and 70, $20,077 20, $20, $20, last year, $77 more. Um, uh, audio, video, adult. 
81,200, and it was um, 86,250 last year, but they only requested 81,200 this year. Or, I'm sorry, 81,500 they requested. Actually, should that be, which, what's the correct number for adult video? Uh, they request, uh, uh, adult video, that's what it is. Uh, 81,500 they requested. Um, 815. 81,500, yeah. So and the number should be 815? Right, 812. I, I think it should be 815. Okay, got it. Somehow we might All right, thanks for that. Um, youth, uh, 31,400 requested. Uh, they got 31,400, and that's um, uh, equal to approximately what they had last year. Um, on, on the team, uh, 8,500. And they had 5,500 last year, and we budgeted 5,500 as they had last year. Uh, online databases, $205,160, and that's what they were requesting. Uh, we go down to the uh, operating expenditures. If we're still we doing our materials, should we? Yeah. Have I any questions yeah. on the okay. materials? Are we going section by section, Joe? Okay. I'm just asking. Yeah, it's probably easier. Okay, I do have a question, Joe. On downloadables, I know for a fact they've gone up drastically since we've been in COVID. So if you're going according to what was granted to them last year, uh, that might not be advisable because I know for a fact they've gone up drastically. You can ask Susan, and it's very likely for that one they're going to need what they requested. Those are the e-books and the e-audio books, and the circulation on those have gone up sharply, so if you were measuring it by circulation, I would think that number would go up. But is that increase due to COVID, and now that we're opening up, we um, to I gave you a little chart in your uh, your work packet for Wednesday. It shows that it's maintaining it's that same level. It's something where people tried it for the first time and now they realize that they like it. So you don't think that with the weather changing and everyone having other activities and um, different recreation that that would still no, I mean, maintain I mean, the same number? I mean, you, you would maybe compromise more and then make it more like 105 or something, but it's not a number I would cut. I, and I just want to say for the record, you know, I cut all of these numbers last year because we were in a pandemic. I reduced them from their previous year. I just put them back where they were. And it's kind of breaking my heart that I reduced them last year. Now I'm sorry I did it. I, I knew we wouldn't have people browsing, so the circulation would go down. So I reduced the numbers, but now if you're going to stick with the pandemic numbers, that's really unfortunate, and I'm regretting my choice last year. If that's an area that's uh, very popular, we can go back up to the 110 day request. Thank you. Thank Susan, you, Do you have actual data on that? How many users were actually being used? Yeah. Could we have that information? Weren't you, didn't you give that to us yeah. last week when we went through the numbers? Honestly, Wasn't that part of the information we got? Because we kind of lost track. Yeah, because I didn't uh, receive my even my information even for passport information either. So I just okay. need clarification in terms of that as well. Okay. So whenever someone has a chance, I would greatly appreciate. You didn't get the passport the email no, that I, I sent out. I sent it to all trustees uh, and both of Carolyn's email addresses. I sent that out. I believe it was Tuesday. Okay, I'll look again, but I did not receive anything. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, uh, Ms. Joe, Olson or Ms. Olson? Okay, Joe, I was going to ask. Um, I see you stayed the same with AV use, but you went down with teens. Um, we are really trying to court the teens. Can that's three uh, three thousand? Can't you give them the money they asked for for that one? Yeah, she said you went down on teens, 8,500 to 5,500, which is the last year figure. Right, we're going to. Yeah, but what we're really trying to court the teens. Is that a wise decision? Well, I mean, it really it actually is a reduction. It is harder to get AV these days. So we actually reduced the teens' request. 
puts a number of these put in, so that's reducing the production. But it's cutting it sharply. I'm more concerned about adult books, okay. frankly. That's, it. that's cool. Yeah. Any other questions? about the three major changes, adult books, juvenile books, teen books. What was that based on? Last year. Last year, COVID, 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 COVID crisis. Oh, we can't, uh, you can't do that. You can't base it on last, no company, everybody in the world who is in Vegas 5, everybody in the United States, I mean, we're, they are moving forward. You're moving backwards. I don't get it. The cut, the cut last year was about 15% between what they're asking and what the numbers are here. Okay. And circulation is down 50%. So I, I think we're probably have a surplus at that point. Okay. Can I ask Carolyn, please? Uh, you did say that the adult books are later on. We can adjust these if we get all of a Wait, sudden. Wait, because so you're planning a on having the budget finished and agreed upon next month. You're figuring actually on Wednesday. That's not, we have to wait 30 days for it to be totally. Isn't it 30 days, Greg? Well, if you want to help her out. She so the tentative budget ordinance will be uh, passed at the next meeting and then we have to wait 30 days after that to finalize it so that the public has a chance to review the actual budget and make comments at the public hearing which um, not to jump too far ahead but I think it's now it's going to be scheduled on July 20th if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's true. I think it's already been a couple of seconds. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the public hearing. Okay, so the, days. But Greg has to have this documentation completed by Wednesday. I understand that. Okay. If, if you look at the total, the total library of the books and uh, audiovisual, uh, they requested seven hundred twenty-three thousand. We're we're at six fifty-seven. There's a difference of about ten percent there. That's all. Well, and you did agree to go back up for downloadables to 100. Well, I think we go up then and see even less than that. Yes. yes. All right. Okay. But we're also I mean, coming out of a, a pandemic, like we right. said. If you think that's an area we should increase, I, I, I go along with that. Okay. Downloadables are going up. Well, so you already said they would. Back, back to 110. Thank you. But, okay. okay, we'll see. Any other questions on total library materials? Rachel, the next one is library operating expenditures, please. Okay. Uh, C CCS charges remain the same, $84,310. Uh, processing of supplies, $18,200 remains the same. Interest charges, um, $9,540, they remain the same. Software licenses, $107,136 remains the same. Printing, 45999 um, We changed it to 34243 because of the uh, uh, chapter one will be coming out four times a year instead of six. That's the difference there. Um, library supplies, $3,100, and it stays the same at $3,100. I believe that's for the uh, uh, one of the departments separately though. Um, programming and support adult, um, we're at uh, 24,431. Uh, last year we had uh, 24,431. Uh, they requested 31,580, I'm not sure uh, what additional programs they're putting in, but uh, this is the same level as was last year. Uh -huh. um, programming support juvenile, 
uh, twenty dollars, and that's what was requested, and it's up from twenty-three thousand last year. Uh, I'm sorry, thirty-five thousand. Okay, programming support and support events, uh, thirty-eight hundred dollars, and we're offering twenty-eight hundred because the uh, we talked about it last time, not having the. Uh, thousand dollars spent on a, on a Sunday extravaganza, opening Sunday, or whatever it was called. Um, okay, I think we need to talk about that. I think that's a very popular program, very important for um, the new school year and the new um, summer program. That, that I think was a celebration because the library was going to go from summer hours being closed on Sunday to being open on Sundays. And they spend a thousand dollars on I'm not sure right. like giveaways or something. Uh, Ed came in. It, it, it's always been kind of um, a party atmosphere. We invite the community in and we do a celebration with I don't know, it's been many years since we've done it because we have been open in the summers on the Sundays. But yeah, it just seemed like a good idea to go back to it. If we were going to stay closed on the Sundays during the summer and then do a big celebration to reopen, you can't get people back in the library if you don't encourage it. You just keep cutting. It's, it's you're going to put us in a death cycle. It's going to start going like this. Okay, I'm going to continue on programming and support for teens. They requested $6,395. Um, we have there's no change there. Public performing rights. $5,000, no change. Local record offsite storage, $3,000, no change there. Per capita grant expenditures, $71,605, no change. Grant other expenditures, $3,750, no change. Volunteers, $2,092, no change. And the total operating is 424. 518 is requested and we're we're at 404 622 so the difference is about twenty thousand dollars in, in that that's about a five percent difference so a thousand dollars can't be had for a popular program celebration that's not even my question my question well, well, can the answer just go ahead get your, get your answer You know, it's, it's a thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Um, my question is more for Susan and uh, the per capita grant expenditures. That's we have to have a per capita grant in order to have the money to expend, right? That's correct. So at this point, we're still spending the old per capita grant. So in order to get a new per capita grant, we have to have our employees, they, but one of the big questions is, are you a member of your organization? And things like that. Um, if we don't have those, the likelihood of us getting the larger number of the per capita grant, is it there? Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not worried about our not getting the per capita grant for next year, and I think it actually is going to be higher than 71605. I'm a little worried about what we are going to spend it on if you, like, say flatly we can't have this celebration. That would be an appropriate thing to spend per capita grant money on. But, yeah, I, I'm not worried that we won't next year. I think it's, it's very concerning the following year that if you aren't living up to the state standards that they will look closely at that. And I also know that with the grants, that when they give them to us or grant them to us, we do have to spend them on specific things. And categories with, of things, yeah. Yes, categories. With them making these cuts, do you think that will affect other than the one you suggested, the $1,000? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm not concerned about it. See, that's separate money. So I'm not concerned about that for this coming year. I am concerned about it thinking a year out, but okay. for this year, I think it is. Thank you. It's actually a slightly larger number than this. We'll have to get that correct number. We don't have it firmly yet, but we think we know what it is. Thank Would you. you be using the, the capital grant to 
uh, fund this $1,000 program? I could, yes. but not if the board just flat out says, no, you can't have that program. See, I mean, it comes out of a grant bill that's possible. It's not taxpayer money, technically. It comes from someplace else. Susan, do you have Could a I breakdown of your per capita grant or your plans for it? Uh, not in a line by line sort of way. It, because for one thing, it's very messy this year because they extended last year to December 31st and they've extended this year to December 31st. And I don't know what the budget deadline is going to be for next year. So, yeah, but most of the remaining money in the per capita grant this year is going to be uh, development of the website. Development of the website? Yeah, the Improvement Recycling Did on the we website use redevelopment. Yeah, and most of that money is coming out of per capita grant. How much of it is coming out of per capita? Let's say it. Okay. All right, thank you. That's fine. Well, there are certain things only that we could spend per capita. So which per capita grant are we talking about for the website and for this Sunday um, event? It's, it's, the, the per capita grant is just a hunk of money. I tell them the general categories that we think we're going to use it for each year. And then, for example, we have always used that to buy the supplies for the 3D printer and the other supplies for the technology. And so like, if we replace the 3D printer, that comes out of per capita grant. Because I try not to put anything out of per capita grant that is a must have in case we don't have the money. Okay. All right, I got that. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions for anyone? Not sure so is there an answer, yes or no? Are we giving a thousand dollars for this program or not? I think Susan said she might be able to take it out of the per capita grant. I have a question. Yeah. So have a question. question. Are we but it has to be. I was going to say if we do that, Carolyn, can I ask you a question? If I could just get my Go ahead, question. Get question. Line and line and line 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 are we going to be open on Sundays or not? I mean, well, I, but we had said before is that we would go back to full hours and but remain closed on Sundays during the summer and then at the beginning of the school year after the Sunday after Labor Day we would reopen for Sundays for the school year. Okay, so, so that Sundays was, will be closed during the summer. That, that was my plan but okay. now if you're reducing our hours to 54 hours then I'm going to have to look at you know what what those hours are. Okay. That is really detrimental to the community. There are so many people, I mean, they work every day. They want to come to the library on Saturdays and Sundays. You know, a good idea might be to open later on Tuesday or Thursday and throw those hours into Sunday because it's very quiet here in the mornings. There's not many people that come in at 10 o'clock in the morning. No, it's not. Well, would it be, um, Benny Keen Adams has a question about the Sunday hours. She was wondering, if it would be possible and if it would save any money just to pay regular time instead of one. I think that's what we're doing already. Yes. We already made that change? No. I think she just was advocating for putting money in the budget to cover Sunday hours. She yes. I think she yeah. disagree with what, in fairness, it was my decision to not reopen on summer Sundays. So she was suggesting that we should do that and we should put money in for it. Yeah, because all of the other Northwestern suburbs are open on Sundays. So we would be the only one that isn't. And, and really working more during the week, two times a week or something, is that going to really be much of a saving? Well, I don't say the hours need to be open when the, when the patrons are here. That Oh, I don't think we have a problem with patrons not showing up. Um, we definitely have, uh, the library has a go to town. In fact, I've been here for this many times. It's, it's, it has a piece of mail. We, we have more account. We can get those numbers and we'll be looking at them and see where they land. Thank you. Okay, um, we are at, oh, I know. Carol, I thought. I thought you were going to ask, or if she thought that money would come out of the per capita, that you would allow that one thousand. Is that what you were saying? Going to say or no? No, I was wondering what she was using per capita for, and then it looks like whether we're open on Sundays or not open on Sundays, the termination of that event, correct? 
Sure. Right. So I think well, and if the board, I mean, yeah. normally the board does not tell me what programs to have and what programs not to have. No. So no. that's no. what a little confusing here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is not normal. All right. Are we going to move on to general? Yes. yes. Yeah. Go ahead. We're done with that category. Okay. Uh, janitorial supplies. Um, they requested thirty-five thousand, but then. Uh, we reduced the amount because COVID has gone from, uh, we reduced it back to uh, 32,000, which is what they had last year. Um, copiers, 9,000, no change. But we spent 45,000, or we plan on spending 45,000. 30, 35,000, it's at 32,000, I believe that's for, that was But on that line item for 2021, we yeah. we're projecting 45,000. You mean last year? Last year. For this current fiscal year. 2021? It says. 45,508. Uh, under janitorial supplies? Excuse me, that's COVID supplies. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, I don't see that line here. I think it's in a different section. I didn't see it. My mistake. You know, you almost well, have to look it, at. It's on the. It's, it's very it's small. On the next page. You almost have to look at janitorial and COVID supplies together because the line, believe it or not, the line does blur for uh, things like gloves and so forth. Between okay. those two lines, uh, it looks like the total spend is expected to be about sixty-five thousand dollars this year. And that includes a lot of, you know, hand sanitizer, masks, uh, extra gloves, the shields uh, that you see at the desks and, and things of that nature. You know, extra steps that we have to take, extra cleaning supplies. Right. But Greg, you're you're budgeting five thousand, and your spend is thirty-four thousand. So, um, if you if you if you look at the two lines together, COVID supplies and janitorial supplies. Mm -hmm. The expected spend for this year is sixty-five thousand oh. dollars, and excuse me, and the budget that we asked for uh, was uh, forty thousand. Mm -hmm. So you know uh, about a third reduction uh, from that. Normally, what we would spend is about somewhere between uh, thirty and thirty-five thousand annually just on janitorial supplies. Um, you know which. You know, price fluctuates depending on uh, supply and so forth. Well, what we need to do is consider these items as line items as they're listed. Um, while janitorial supplies may be similar to COVID, there are still separate line items, and, you know, I, and I we think, need to sort of look at it that way. So yeah, if I, you're saying you want to adjust some numbers because of yeah, I think the janitorial supplies need to stay where uh, where the S was. Uh, because further down, it looks like um, we're cutting non-contractual services, which looks, just by the numbers, looks to be the overnight cleaning crew. So uh, we're going to have to do extra cycles uh, on our own. Okay, so non-contractual is the overnight? Uh, that's part of it, yes. Part of it? Is there another one? Uh, we gave, we, uh, Dave gave you a list of, of uh, non-contractual items. Oh, I meant, I meant, is there another cleaning service that's contractual? No, this no. is the only one. Okay, that, thank you, that's fine. Yeah, but they, they can change less than minimum wage. Okay, so, Joe, did you, um, did you, right. Professional development. Uh, oh, no, wait a minute, oh, wait. wait a minute. Under janitorial supplies, right. you went from 35 to 32. 32. And, he, and what Greg is saying is that you decreased non-contractual, which is that overnight cleaning you were talking about? It's the reduction is $3,000. I, I believe that was going, reducing the amount of COVID supplies that they had an exceptional number for last year. Under janitorial supplies, is that what you're saying? But Joe, you're, you're excluded, you're, you have a deep cut at the end in non-contractual supply, uh, non-contractual arrangements. Of about thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars, which looks an awful lot like the you overnight cleaning crew. No, it's at the end, Joe. Yeah. Could you tell well, us where that is? Page 
Can I get the last page? Oh, the last page. Oh, and it's, uh, it's about the middle of the page. We had asked for 76,420, and it's been reduced to 45,000. I have one quick question. Is building and equipment maintenance a um, part of like special reserves? No. Okay. It's uh, technically it's the building and site fund, which is levied separately, uh, you know, by the uh, property tax levy. So it's a fund by itself. And not funded out of special reserves. No. Okay. Thanks. You know. Um, so because you're cutting that, Joe, we have to do, we'll, we'll probably have to do extra cycles in the morning to do what the cleaning crew didn't do, and that's going to take supplies. So it's a little, um, you okay. can, I think you can cut one or the other, but you can't cut both. Yeah. Okay. I, sh I see the connection. Okay. So we, we should restore that to 35000 on that line. Okay. Copiers, $9,000, no change. Uh, professional development, we're at uh, $10,304. They requested uh, $24,515. And okay, that's we the, have to stop there. That's the elimination of uh, travel and uh, to events. Uh, do you remember listening to all of the librarians and yes. how they recommended and yeah, they, practically they, cried for professional yeah, development? Yeah, you, you know, I, I think I asked somebody what they learned and they didn't seem to tell me. Oh, what? Any, what? No, are you I'm kidding not, me? Can I correct that? No, I, that was me. You and know. I said that, okay. no, what I had said was that I had I had a baby. I tried to have a baby really hard, and then I had a baby, and then I had a little baby that I was taking care of, so I hadn't been able to go. And I had been looking forward to this year finally getting to go so I could learn more and bring it back to be a better leader here and to be a better staff member. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, part of what I heard in that uh, bit was people talking about how they are officers for some of these things, and they are presenters for some of these things, and by totally cutting this, it, it's a huge thing. Um, the people who are presenting and who are officers and so on, that goes right out the window. And that's all stuff that not only helps our library, but makes our library look good. You know, not that we necessarily have to look so fantastic but it definitely helps our library and in for that respect in that respect uh, I'm a little concerned about how much you cut you can look at it as education because that's what it is I mean did you spend money to send your kids to college we have to spend some money to keep our staff uh, well informed and up to date so they can do the best job that they're, they want. My if other there's concern anything is if you're cutting be. this so much, Joe, then we ought to give by letting them have their, their rooms they belong to. I mean, that doesn't cost that much. If you're going to cut this so drastically, we ought to give, <clears throat> give one, not cut both. The fact of the matter is, if there's anything earth-shaking in library science, it will be in the newspaper, it will be on the internet. Oh, my God! Are you freaking kidding me? You want to revolt? The, the other people are going to be like, narrowest statements that I've heard. Well, that's newspaper. has no real library experience except walking in the door. Okay. You know what, when comparing memberships and um, professional development travel 
Um, there are other governmental entities, which is probably supposed to be a, being a library rather than corporate, where everything isn't fully funded. Um, the expectation is that a percentage or um, memberships are paid by the individual, and then when you decide that you want to attend a conference, either your corporation or your governmental entity comes up with a percentage that they'll pay, and that's all. And remember, the reason we're trying to cut spending is because during the entire pandemic, remember, we our, our taxpayers funded the library staff, um, the library salaries and benefits to the tune of what, like two three million. So we're just trying to cut back, and for for the time being, to pay your personal memberships. I mean. I don't think that's earth shattering. Well, but I think it's cruel. Is right for but I think it's cruel to not a say. Corporation. I think it's cruel. And other governmental entities that I have worked for do not pay 100%. Have you worked for a library? Yeah, have you worked for a library? This is common practice in libraries. Governmental entities, they're the same, they're, the, they're run by the same basis. No. It's just that, yes, yes, yes. Libraries are no different. In when it comes to governmental spending than any other governmental entity. It's the same basis. The big difference is that this is a knowledge industry. Thank you. All areas in government are knowledge. Education is yeah. more so than library. Uh, what would you consider, though, uh, funding part of the cost? If, if I had, you know, three or four people go to PLA, say, would you consider funding 50% of that cost? Because right now it's just completely stricken. Would you be willing to have So let me ask you this question. And I know we hate to talk about taxpayers and, and, and what they have to pay to fund everything. But, but, let's, but, let's, but let's, a lot of taxpayers here. But let's look at um, you know, taxpayers who, who were laid off, furloughed, don't have insurance. I mean, we, we really helped our staff survive this horrible pandemic. But remember, it was on the taxpayers. So all we're saying is, now that we're trying to bounce that, can we cut some of the spending that is not that critical, which is putting some of the costs on the individual? Okay, so well, I mean, we're talking millions. Some million? of the costs, but right now you're putting all of the costs on the individual. And I just was asking, would you be willing to put up, put some of, some of the costs? And I do have to just say, yes, it was great that nobody here had to be furloughed, but everybody was working the whole time, and they provided a lot of. Public, in comparison to the general public who is also working from home, they didn't receive 100% pay. I know people who received 25% cuts and a lot of cuts. What I'm trying to say is it's not apples to apples, but somebody has to pay for it. For once, could we just take a step back? I mean, we're looking at salaries of $3 million. Right. If you don't want anybody to travel and you don't want to fund any portion of that this year, we can live with that. There are, we understand that we need to make sacrifices. So if that is the sacrifice you need, I do have a couple of key people I would really like to be able to send that have key roles to play on a national or a statewide basis. But, you know, I, I certainly do understand what you're saying, that this is a year that we need to make some cuts. And, you know, if we don't pay the subscriptions this year, I can certainly live with that. How many people would yeah. it be? That, uh, I can think of two in particular that have particular roles that they need to be playing. So would it be feasible, Joe and Carolyn, if we considered covering a portion of their expense, since they already are committed to these things that they're, they're, she's talking about? I'm not saying cover all of it, but would you consider covering a portion of it? I think we just need to, we're, we're just cutting the travel and that's it. I mean, when we have people that are presenting at a national event, a national thing, and have the commitment that they have made, you're not willing to budge and cover a portion of portion, no matter how big, of the expense? Exactly, exactly what are they going to present? you got to tell me that. 
Well, as we told you, the one person, the teen librarian, is supposed to be the chair of the I Read Committee. And so that is a very big deal in this state. That's our theme is the summer is, every year is summer reading, and that actually goes all around the world. It's used in Australia. It's used by the U.S. military forces. She's the chair of the whole thing for next year, for 2023, I think. She has committee meetings she needs to attend. I'm sure many of them will be remote, or will be virtual, but I would like to be able to send her if she needs to go. And then I have another staff member who's on the Digital Literacy Committee of PLA, and she needs to attend those meetings. And again, most of her meetings are virtual, but this is the year where they meet in person. Every, every two years they meet, and this is the year. So those are the two people, you know, I, I would love more people to go. I think PLA is a very, very helpful experience, but you know, if you could see your way to letting those two people go, I would be very happy with that. I even pay for it out of per capita, I suppose. Joe, I also want to say we've submitted proposals for these conferences. They have not been accepted yet, so we don't know who's speaking yet. But it's always been great to submit and make the library look great on a national scale. Well, Susan, if you can, if you, if you can handle that to prepare, I don't even know what the amount is, but what I'm trying to say is um, see that there are other employees in this library who probably would also like to go somewhere. I don't know how we make that determination, but you know, if one person is going to make it a personal expense and then someone else is being funded by the library, I guess your per capita grant is a better way to go. Okay. Thank you. That's fair. And thank you for giving her the permission to use the per capita grant. We're well, just trying to remember the money then is taken from someplace else. Whereas she might have bought more books with the per I'm yeah, sorry, Joe. Do you know where we are at this point? Yeah, are we team. moving on? Do you have any more questions for the whatever? Is so? Is there? there an amount that you're putting in here? No. In this line item. We're on mileage right now. Six seventy-five. No change. Nothing for professional development. I'm sorry. We. No, no we're not changing that. No. Not yet. No. He said no. Professional collection. It was eighty-five hundred last year. Um, we went with the five hundred as a budget. They requested ten thousand sixty-two dollars. Can I ask a question on this, Joe? What actually is involved with the professional collection? What so we know what we're voting on? Here. I think Susan would be a better one to explain yeah. that. That's why I'm yeah. asking Susan. I, I think that. Oh, that was a joke. No, it, I think it's things like the book review journals and any books that they might use. There may be software in there too. I don't have that in front of me, so I'm not. So that's sure. basically what's used in order to figure out what is the current and, and like they were saying when they were talking. Correct. They don't just go according to one or two things. They usually go for three or four, if possible, and those are the materials they need in order to do that. Yeah, and I, but I, that's a bigger number than that would be for that. So there's going to be software in there, too, and I'm sorry, I just don't know about that one, what it is. But it's kind of a necessity. Yes. So, well, I mean, I, I actually think I, I'm okay with the reduction. I, I'm pretty sure we can make that work. Okay. But thank you. For thank you. I just wanted to make sure, because if that is what they need in order to determine what to get for the library, it's kind of asinine to cut it that much. Thank you. That number was um, 8,400 two years ago, 8,500 last year, and now we're setting it at 8,500 the same. So, anyway, legal fees 40,000 requested, no change. Okay, can I interrupt there? Okay. Um, Becky Keen, Miss Trustee Keen Adams, has a comment to make about the legal fees. In 2019, the total spent for the line item was $76.75. This year, to date, we have spent $29.037 and are projected to reach a total of $38.708. Why is there such an increase? 24% of this amount is due to the lawsuit that Trustee McCool brought against directors. Oh, no, seriously, that's not Here we go. Here we go. Need I say oh, more? Yeah. Yes, I do. Right, this is, you know, this is unnecessary. We have, we point yeah, well, this is my point. 
Do we? Is this you know? Is this a budget review meeting, or are we just going to keep slinging well, we're mud? We're talking about numbers. No, we're not talking about numbers. You know, that's you okay. know. We need to act more professional and like adults. Is there anything I, relevant I to this number? Uh, what she asked. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. You're finished reading that because there's no purpose to that. If she didn't have any data to want to increase this number, then I think we'll move on. But as far as that, okay, also, name calling is not necessary. All right, I'll drop it. Also, I think that having four out of seven trustees being new, we should have a lawyer present at several meetings until we have our footing. Three trustees have requested that the lawyer be present, but we have been ignored. We also need to allow money for the new labor attorney that we will hire. We have been given notice that the staff is creating a union. We is there is there a point to this? I mean, I don't hear. Is, is the there a number you want to give me? The point is, there is that the legal people might not be sufficient. Everything is fine. Oh, everything. Okay, yes, it's fine. We don't need any more. Right now, we don't need any more of that reading. There, I don't see anything effective. If the budget oh was created. Gosh, are you kidding me? I am. I am not kidding. I'm very serious. We're, it's not time to read the storybook. It's time to deal with budget and figures and facts. Story of All right, so, um, Trustee Olson, I'm asking you please to stop. Can we move forward. Um, where did we stop? Except I think on legal fees, I believe. Okay. Legal fees, no change from forty thousand. <laughs> Consultants, twenty-seven thousand five hundred, no change. Kitchen supplies, one thousand two hundred fifty, no change. Promotional expense, seventeen thousand, uh, ten thousand requested, uh, seventeen thousand one fifty. Can we go back to consultants, please? Yes, thank you. There's, uh, there was, there were two asks basically for consultants. The first was fifteen thousand dollars to uh, do the uh, strategic planning, which is overdue. It should have happened last year, but because of the pandemic, we weren't able to do it. And the second part is uh, consultants, we call it consulting fees, but it really support fees that uh, IT pays in order to have uh, off-site uh, backup for uh, network issues, uh, uh, as well as uh, housing the, uh, the, uh, the website uh, off-site, uh, off off-premises. It seems that there are a couple more <coughs> consulting things which are not being considered here, which we probably need additional room in the budget for. So I think that'll be determined on Wednesday mm -hmm. at that meeting, and then we'll have to uh, make a quick change. I mean, at this point, it's not on the agenda. Um, can I ask a question here? So is that something we're putting a uh, question mark by to be uh, determined consulting? I don't know if Greg Prince was speaking. I, I, don't, I was trying not to respond to him. Uh, Greg, can I ask you one question about your 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 information? Strategic plan is 15. So are you saying those um, IT consultants are about 12, 5? Is that what you're expecting? Right? Yeah. OK. All right. Well, right now, that's why that line item hasn't been touched, because we haven't finalized that. Um, so that's still a question. So what are you waiting for? The board meeting on the 16th is on the agenda. Is one on the agenda. So there would be the, I believe, two things that supposedly are going to be determined with uh, Greg and Joe, if I'm not incorrect on that. I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. What's the that? question is, there was one other thing pertaining to payroll and then this, that they were going to be discussed here. Payroll? Just going on with payroll. Payroll Excuse Associate me? One. We okay. had determined yes, that so there was too much being that. cut. And you said that Joe yes. and Greg can Correct. determine. Correct. So that, as well as this line, will be given to us on Wednesday, if I'm not misunderstanding what you are saying. Yes. Thank you. Okay, can we move on? Please. Yeah, actually, um, just going back to the payroll associate one, uh, I looked at, at the sheets that you handed out, Joe, on page uh, on page one for patron services. That number should be sixty five thousand nine hundred and forty five, as opposed to the number that you have in your uh, sheet, where, wherever it is. Okay. Okay. 
let's move on here. Okay. Um, consultants remain the same, uh, although Greg said we need to have for that. We'll look into that. Kitchen supplies remain the same at twelve one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Promotional expense is uh, ten thousand, and uh, it was ten thousand last year. I don't know what uh, they requested seventeen thousand one hundred fifty. Um, office supplies uh, were at uh, fifteen thousand seven hundred. There was a request for sixteen thousand three hundred. Postage and freight, uh, 16,000, requested 20,800. The difference is between the uh, Chapter 1, uh, four mailings instead of six. Publication of legal notices, $1,400, no change. Subscription and dues, uh, $3,529. Okay, so what are you cutting out there? Yeah, that's a big amount. $10,000. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge for subscriptions and dues, really. Are subscription and dues memberships? Memberships. Is that, is that correct? Yes, that's, those are the individual library and memberships to ALA, ILA, ILA. What does an individual membership normally cost? It's a sliding scale depending on how much the person earns. Actually, the life insurance is for all employees. 
Always your problem. Up, up to one time, uh, up to fifty thousand dollars one times annual earnings. Okay, and what was it stays the same? The eleven thousand dollars. And just a slight correction: uh, the total uh, that I had for 21-22 budget should be eight hundred and ten two fifty nine. Not six fifty nine one seventy five. Eight ten two fifty nine. Yes. Okay. Okay. So what I'm trying to figure out is the difference of five percent for group health brought us to seven seven four one thirty three. So does that sound correct? Okay. Um, Greg mentioned his total for. Um, Employee fringe benefits was eight hundred ten thousand two fifty nine. That's the number that was in there. Well, yeah, he's he's got listed six fifty nine, and we're at seven seventy four. So no, no, but he's saying that's an error. Six fifty nine is an error. It's right. been eight hundred ten thousand two fifty nine. So I'm asking what the five percent decrease because staff are paying an additional five percent. That brings it down to seven seven four one three three. Does that sound correct? Want to make sure that's probably where the difference is okay because all the, all the other numbers stay the same all right sounds good he's got an addition there so. okay. the next area is utilities gas 11 uh, i guess that's reading 11,250 no change electric 85,000 no change Water, $7,500, no change. And capital expenditures, we froze that so that all those, those three areas, or those two areas become zero. And we do have some projects that were already underway, and I don't know, they will partly be paid out of that year, won't they? Yeah, so uh, the replacement phone system, uh, the board approved uh, payment to, uh, to TIG uh, and the uh, on May 24th, no, on uh, May 19th, excuse me, and we still have half of that to pay. That's 28,279. Okay. Aurora sign. Uh, similarly, we uh, we pay uh, an additional amount. We have 11,982 dollars to pay back or to pay in addition. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, support agreement for the three up sorter is 27 thousand dollars that we agreed to uh, pay by contract, uh, I believe, uh, three years ago. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, air conditioner in the IT switch closet is a temporary fix at the moment. Uh, we had put that before the board, uh, but, the, uh, the, but the board tabled it uh, for 68.70. And then the last thing is uh, the self-checks and sort of upgrades because the uh, uh, the equipment that drive the, uh, the self checks can no longer be upgraded to the latest uh, to the latest uh, uh, editions of uh, the operating system uh, for a variety of reasons. So you know, I mean, we don't have to do any of this stuff, but. You know, with the phone system, then there, you just have twenty-eight thousand dollars in deposits floating out there in space. Uh, you have uh, twenty-two thousand two hundred and fifty on the sign that are, that's out there floating. Um, I don't trust the air conditioner or the IT uh, switch closet. Um, that's unstable, and that switching gear can be expensive or will be expensive to replace. Um, and in terms of upgrading the self-check and the sorter uh, so that they can take the software necessary to run the operating system, and we don't have to do that. I mean, we can go back to manual sorting if that's... What's the price on the self-check? Uh, 71000 71000 And that's to do uh, a software upgrade? No, it's equipment upgrades so that... So, um, it used to be that... Uh, a long time ago when a computer would come out, uh, very quickly afterwards they would come out with a new computer and they would write software, usually gaming software, to run on the faster chips, which obsoleted the older chips. Now what's happening is, you know, because of uh, security upgrades and, and things of that na uh, nature, the chips have to be 
uh, improved all the time, so it's no longer a gaming issue as much as it is being able to take the security software and, and be able to operate. What happens is, at a point in time, they stop supporting that uh, software, uh, the hardware, and then we need to upgrade the hardware in order to take the software and, and have some sort of reliable backup. Okay, so but without that, I mean, basically you got a big boat anchor in the middle of uh, in the right, middle I'm of trying to understand. Services. So because there's a software upgrade, our equipment is not capable. Yeah, they upgrade I software every it. day. I got it. Okay, so that's great. Then I have another question. What's twenty-seven thousand for the starter? Is that a yearly amount we pay? Yes, for that that's a maintenance fee. Okay. All right, I didn't realize the phone was not totally paid for. I didn't realize the sign wasn't totally paid for. Um, and just another question. The website, is uh, is that finished? Is that finished? No, it's underway. It's okay, and what about payment to the website? How's that, or is that coming out of per capita? Okay, and do you know where we are in the amount for that website? And say it again? Approximate, like, or did we make a payment on the new website, or is it? Uh, we've made a couple. I think uh, it's either forty-six eighty or forty-eight sixty. Two payments of that. Okay, and how much more do we? Um, I'd get. i get the check. Like another payment, approximately a forty. Is it like three equal payments? I think. I think the total project was fourteen sixteen thousand or, or thereabouts. I get the check. Oh, you said, oh, so your payment was not forty-six thousand. It was four thousand. Hundred. All right. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I'm like, whoa. Okay. All right, I understand. Well, that makes sense. Then um, these items do need to be included in um, in um, capital expenditures because they were already started. And then, um, as far as the sort or self check, I, I don't. There's, you can't get around that, or we won't have it. Yeah, I don't think I can get around check. any of the equipment that we're doing. I mean, it's a very. I understand. Uh, I agree. Very exact. And if we can look at the building for a minute, I mean, there's. But just wait real quickly on this line item. So does this is this capital projects equipment, the line item for all of these items that we yes. discussed? 145, 131. Okay, thank you. So Joe, we need 145, 131 in your column then. Alright, and then you wanted to move to where I'm sorry? Uh, the next line up on the building. Uh, I understand your feelings about the roof. Uh, it's completely your call. Uh, for the 10,000 to BDC and the 716,000 uh, uh, for the roof. Uh, the miscellaneous ground repairs, I think, are something that need to be addressed, as well as the uh, limestone on the lower uh, windowsill on the east side of the building. So those would be considered a, like an emergency because they're in bad well, repair? I don't know. It's, it's not like there's a sinkhole or anything. Uh, right, can I just, just back up a second? Um, you said something about... Um, the building. What were the first two items you just mentioned? I, have, I just wrote ten thousand. Uh, the uh, BEC for ten thousand, okay. and then uh, the roof replacement for seven sixteen four hundred. Seven sixteen. Oh, you're talking about the roof entirely. Right. That job. That job. No, I said I understand your feelings about that, and whether you want to pay for that and move forward with that. But and if I can direct your attention. Okay, but let me just make make one statement. The roofing project is now been canceled. So that's over and done with. But we, you're saying we have a yeah, 10,000. I understand your feelings. So, well, it has nothing to do with feelings. It has, legally, it's been done. But back to BDC, so there's a $10,000 amount that we owe him. And did you say something about, did I miss something to pay $1,700? Or were you trying to um, give me the total amount for the roof? Did I misunderstand there's not another line item here? Uh, 7 400 was the roof. Okay, all right, all right, I'm looking at 7224, but that's fine. Okay, yes, and is there anything else you wanted to add here? Uh, the things that I want to add are the ground repairs uh, for 31,000, uh, sidewalks, uh, uh, read uh, ceiling and striping the parking lot, uh, relaying the pavers, and uh, potentially uh, doing something for the benches and, uh, and having to uh, up I'm sorry, uh, having to maintain the sprinkler system. Um, you know, while you know, 31,000 is a lot, each one of those items individually is not a lot. Uh, some of them are very real uh, trip hazards 
which could result in liability insurance claims. Uh, for example, uh, all of the pavers have, you know, have settled so that there's, you know, at least an inch or two uh, uh, drop at, at the curb. So they should be uh, picked up and relayed uh, at a minimum or replaced altogether. Uh, the sidewalk, we have cracked sidewalks, you know, around the employee entrance. Uh, which uh, need to be addressed. Um, we do have, uh, sometimes we have employees trip and fall just walking across the clear floor. If you can believe it. I don't, I don't know that. I putting, remember when that happened a few years ago. I don't think putting cracks uh, or elevation changes is the best thing for them. Uh, and then the last thing is $15,000 uh, potentially to address the uh, limestone window sills, which are deteriorating on the east side of the building, on the, on the uh, I'll call it the, uh, the basement floor. You know, it's the, it's the floor that is mostly underground where the tech equipment is. And, and stuff. Okay, okay. Can I ask one question? Maintains sprinkler system, is that a um is that like a maintenance contract, or, or what is that? Is that what you were referring to? So, uh, we, you know, in, in the maintenance accounts, we do have somebody come in and do opening and closing and stuff like that. But you know, very often we have to replace parts. You know, significantly, uh, things happen. You know, sometimes the you know, snow plows get a little feisty and uh, will knock the heads off. Um, you know, right now. Uh, you know, the lighting crews out on uh, Waukegan uh, are, are uh, destroying everything. Yeah, they're pretty much. They're, they're cutting through the uh, supply lines and, uh, and so forth. So, you know, I mean, at times we do get money back from the city, uh, from the village, for those types of things, but not all of them. Okay. Um, well, as far as uh, maintaining the sprinkler system, I, I totally understand that, but I think maybe um, you and Joe need to go with these. Um, with all of these tomorrow, yes. you know, and, and come to a, a conclusion, okay? Can I ask a question? I thought, uh, Greg, if I might have missed, I might not be remembering this correctly, but I thought with the limestone that you said uh, it's going to cost 15000 that there was an issue where because of what's happening with the limestone, it's also negatively affecting the windows themselves? Yes. Yeah, so... Uh, so if happens, we let this go, it might wind up costing us more in the long sure. run? Okay. Well, like anything. Yeah. You know, maybe now or maybe later. Okay. So that's kind of uh, something we should seriously address. Yeah, uh, I don't know if, you know, if there's a ceiling process that you know, we could possibly do or, or, or some type of scaling process or mm -hmm. we have to remove it all together. Uh, we won't put the limestone back in there. Of course, the limestone is the original limestone from 1962 or 64, whatever the building was built. Thank you. Just moving on, we uh, voted the audit expense $9,500, no change. Liability insurance uh, $36,000. 546, no change. Social Security, $48,690, no change. Uh, Joe, on, on the uh, Social Security, um, the number that I had on, on this document that I passed, you know, that we passed out to the board on page 15 was 275, 329. Whatever number you have, there's going to be no change on that. Okay. Workers' compensation, $20,914, no change. Unemployment compensation, $10,000, no change. Uh, building equipment and maintenance, repairs and improvements, Forty-four thousand three hundred, no change. Contractual maintenance, twenty-two thousand four hundred forty dollars, no change. Non-contractual maintenance, seventy-six thousand four twenty. You're asking to you cut it to uh, what you had last year, forty-five thousand dollars. 
And uh, I think the difference was the uh, cleaning crew. Is that what we're talking about there? The yes. You know, I, I uh, you know, it, it also strikes me that, you know, that the contractual maintenance in 2021 was 47,000 and we're asking 22. Uh, I believe what happened is that when uh, Dave and Rich sat down and, and went through their accounts, they, uh, they more appropriately categorized uh, items. Uh, so, you know, I don't know that cutting it to $45,000 works. Um, it will leave us exposed in some areas. Like I said, uh, the thing that it looks like to me is like the overnight cleaning. Uh, the overnight cleaning has uh, janitorial supply implications. It also has manpower uh, implications. When I look at the maintenance, uh, when I look at the maintenance uh, sheets that you handed out, there are, and I just had a, uh, excuse me just for one moment. You know, we had, we had a reduction of the uh, part-timers they do a lot of the maintenance, but yet, if we, if we, uh, yeah, here it is. So, uh, payroll library grade five, you took from 90,441 down to 61,650. Um, those are the people that are gonna be doing the work that the overnight cleaning crews were previously doing. Um, also, uh, you took uh, payroll, I know it says librarian one, but it, what it is is actually a maintenance coordinator, down from 25175 for half a year to zero. Um, Dave Dabrowski plans on retiring on December 31st, which means that we need to put somebody in his chair. We weren't going to put somebody at the supervisor level, but somebody at a lower level. And um, knocking that person out completely as you have creates uh, creates an issue. I, I mean, right now, Dave does a lot of work around here that we don't have to call um, outside services for. Uh, so I recommend that you put that 25,175 back in the uh, in the maintenance. I was led to believe that uh, Rich was gonna... Uh, so Rich, Rich will be the supervisor, but he is not going to be walking around with a tool belt that's what this other person is going to do? Okay, and that's a position that's not filled at this point. Because no, because Dave has not retired yet. Right, right. Okay. So that should be restored then. Okay. Can, can I just ask for clarification? Rich is going to be the supervisor of building and ground, or I'm sorry, your terminal is maintenance? Yes. And what happens to this position in IT? They'll do both. I mean, they're very, it makes sense. I know it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but it does make sense because they're very closely related. So they'll be the supervisor of two departments? Yes. Okay, and then you plan on hiring someone to replace? Somebody to uh, replace the hours that we use with Dave, but not replace the skill set completely. Dave is a supervisor. This person would not be a supervisor. But Dave's also responsible for all the work with them. Builders. So that's what you're hiring. You're hiring some, the second person will be to do all the work that Dave did, correct? Yeah, that's well, and, I mean, there, there's, you know, there's an amazing number of things from, you know, changing uh, oh, ballasts and the lights that. to finding pipes. So that's the second person, because yeah. Rich is not right. in that area. Okay, just needed clarification. So what does it mean that payroll library grade five, the change sounds like a half of a position? Well, um, all, of, uh, all of the people in that line, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do it from memory, so uh, but I can check and get you better numbers. Uh, there are, I believe, six people in that line. Each one of those people work 18 hours a week on the average. And they, they have uh, two functions. One is they clean and the other is they provide security. So when we get teenagers, for example, uh, down in uh, the teen underground that start to act out a little bit, they call security. When we get, uh, some people come uh, to the library and, and uh, 
they work on the computers or use the computers for some sort of entertainment or something like that. Um, once in a while, you get somebody who's inebriated, uh, impaired in some way, and mm -hmm. you need uh, you need security to help resolve that situation. Usually, it ends up you know we call 911 and and uh, have them uh, taken away by the police, uh, maybe to a hospital or something like that, depending on circumstances. Um, so that, you know, I think it's a mistake to, in the face of eliminating the overnight cleaning crew, to actually uh, uh, reduce that line because those are the people that are going to actually bear the front of the additional duties uh, as a result. So if we reduce the uh, overnight cleaning crew, then we need to restore the uh, those people in their maintenance. Yeah. It's like a balloon, Joe. If you squeeze one end, it bulges on the other end. I believe that's an area where the, there is a vacancy and there's also the position that, uh, to take over for day. So there was like, it showed up as two vacancies. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Um, so that's something that you will discuss with yes. the... Yes. So that'll be adjusted. We need, we need to <coughs> okay. take care of that. I'm just marking on my paper so I know okay. which ones we will get different figures for. Thank yes. you, Joe. COVID cleaning, um, they're asking for zero. Uh, we're also at zero. <coughs> Equipment maintenance, 28000 no change. Non-capital expenses, 22000 no change. Furniture and fixtures, 5000 no change. And that's it. Okay, so, um, so there are line items that you'll we'll need to meet with Greg about yes. tomorrow. Yes. Um, so my thought is um, this budget um, that we are reviewing um, it actually ended up at for 2122 5,402,351, which will now need to be adjusted for all these changes, which you and Greg will need to talk about tomorrow, correct? Yes. Greg, do you think it's feasible to think that after your conversation with uh, your conversation together tomorrow, that we'll have this taken care of? I mean, it's a matter of increasing or, or whatever you said you needed well i think it depends on joe's propensity to say yes <laughs> okay so but once the year after your discussion i guess what i'm asking is then yes with the changes this you yes. know we talked about all the changes you would need to talk about so what i'm trying to say is because we want to move forward with the tentative budget this budget with all the kind of the items that the two of you have discussed Will be determined tomorrow, and a different will we'll reach a different total amount for this budget. Correct? Is that, is that yep. stating it correctly? Okay. So, um, to that point, are there any other questions? No. Okay. So we'll technically vote on the tentative budget and what anything else related to this. We did our discussion. We'll vote on that on Wednesday, though. Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And um, yeah, I'd like to say a thank you to Susan and Greg and the rest of the staff that helped prepare the original budget because I, I know it was a well-planned and thorough, fiscally responsible one. And, and it's too bad that we didn't. So anyway, uh, Greg, then you will email us the changes or are um, we waiting until Wednesday? I'm just asking. I will, uh, what I'll do is, is, uh, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, that's I mean, cool, I, mean, I can yeah, deal the, with it. Maybe a lot of work. But I the point understand. Is, uh, the point is, is to produce the ordinance document. Yeah. And once and I produce that, priority. that'll certainly be emailed. I don't, I didn't plan on uh, sending anything else out, but that's if there's fine. something, I I'm have not it asking. to be helpful. Uh, I'm not saying that we have to have it. I'm just asking what we should expect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I just, Susan, I'm thinking, I know this wasn't a vote, 
but I'd like to take a straw poll at least to see where the trustees are in terms of this budget with the changes that Greg and Joe will be working on tomorrow. So can I have a straw poll starting with Joe to approve the 21-22 the 20, budget um, with um, adjustments that will happen tomorrow when you and Greg Yes, speak. yes. We'll, we'll work through the uh, what we discussed. Okay. All right. It should be easy because we're using the same format here. We just added a line here. Okay. And, and just make sure we categorize, capture everything. And I'll, I'll, what I'll do, Joe, is I'll put it in my spreadsheet so that we have something that's arithmetically correct. And then you, you could go through. Uh, you could go through the changes. If you're available at 2:30, that would be great. 2:30, sure. It's the perfect time. Okay, Trustee Schoenfeld. Yes, with the changes, yes. Trustee Knishik, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Trustee Rosansky. Oh, we will see what the changes are. Trustee Olson. No. Okay. Um. And then, of course, I I, I, I will agree with the, the changes. Um. I move that the board of trustees direct the library director to prepare a tentative budget and appropriate appropriation ordinance consistent with the budget and appropriation decisions made by the board tonight and that the library director cause such tentative budget and appropriation ordinance to be made conveniently available for public inspection for at least 30 days prior to final action thereon by posting the tentative budget and appropriation ordinance in a public place in the public library and on the library's website by no later than Wednesday, June 16th, and keep it so posted for at least 30 days before the public hearing on the budget and appropriation ordinance. I move that the library director cause a notice of the public hearing on the tentative budget and appropriation ordinance to be published in the newspaper not less than 30 days prior to the public hearing on the budget and appropriation ordinance and consistent with all legal requirements. And I believe the date for the public hearing has been scheduled, Susan, for July the 20th. Okay, thank you. Um, I cannot have it all, all the stuff done on the Wednesday, though, because you won't have, have voted on it yet, so it will have to be posted by Thursday. So, um, you're saying Wednesday, but you won't have, we may not get out of here until 11 o'clock at night. So, we'll when, oh, I see what you're saying. change the date to, to Thursday. And will that affect your 30 days? No, no you're we're so fine. Days, no. We're fine. Okay. no, you're right. That's absolutely right. Okay. All right. Um, if there aren't any further questions. I have a question, Madam President. Can I make a comment? Can you, after the meeting with Mr. McCula and his primary audit, can you supply that to the community before Wednesday's meeting so we can see that as a community member? Thank you. As I just read, it will be available after for the vote on um, June 16th at the board meeting. And it will be in the packet online in the board book. Okay, thank you. Surely. Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. 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 Okay. That adjourns today's meeting for the library budget for 2122. Yes. Sorry. Trustee Jordan? Yes. Trustee Nanushak? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Yes. Trustee Mazensky? Yes. Trustee Olson? Yes. 